As the debate intensifies about how long to continue the coronavirus lockdown in this country, we want to bring in one of the nation's top experts on infectious disease epidemics. Joining us from Baltimore, Dr. Thomas Inglesby, director of the Center for Health Security at Johns Hopkins University. Doctor, let's start with the astonishing spread of this virus. One week mm -hmm. ago, we had 25,000 cases and 307 deaths. But as of Saturday, we had 121,000 cases and 2,000 deaths. What does that tell you about the nature of this virus and where are we in its course, its spread here in the United States? Well, it tells us that this virus is uh, able to spread pretty efficiently and quickly. We've seen that around the world in the last few months, and we should expect that to keep happening in the United States. I think, unfortunately, we are still at the very beginning of this outbreak, and we should you know, expect that to continue for some time and really focus on social distancing as one of our main interventions in trying to slow it. I, I want to pick up on that because I want to ask you about President Trump's evolving policy on ha how to handle the virus. Mm -hmm. As you know, his initial 15 days to stop the spread of the virus mm -hmm. guidelines run out tomorrow, the 15 days end tomorrow. Uh, and he is mm -hmm. now talking about the possibility in certain what he calls low risk parts of the country where there's a low incidence of the virus reopening those areas by Easter. Here he is this week. There are large sections of our country probably can go back much sooner than other sections. Will that work? And what about uh, the president's uh, discussing the idea that you could have some areas of the country where you could begin to open in two weeks? Yeah, at this point, we're seeing numbers go up around the country pretty consistently. There isn't really any place in the country where we've seen numbers go down, and we wouldn't expect to have had enough time for social distancing to change the numbers. So I don't think we have had nearly enough time for these measures to take, to take full effect. I do think in the future, it's possible that parts of the country, once they get control of this virus, that maybe states or regions could begin to relax social distancing measures a little sooner than other parts of the country. But as long as the numbers continue to go up as they are around the country, I think we really need to hold steady with the social distancing until we have a number of different conditions in place. But I want to put up a map, because if you look uh, at the situation, there are broad parts of the country uh, you can see in the mm -hmm. Northeast, in the New York general area, some cities, big cities in the Midwest and on the West Coast, where there are serious hotspots. And then there are broad areas where there are very few cases. So, so why can't we, as the president is suggesting, treat different parts of the country where the virus is at a very different state, treat those different parts of the country differently? Well, I think the first reason is that I don't really have confidence. I don't think many in public health have confidence that we really know where all the cases are. We've begun to do much more diagnostic testing around the country, especially in places where there is a lot of illness. But in some parts of the country, we don't have enough coverage of diagnostic testing. We're seeing what we see, but there could be twice as many, three times as many, four times as many cases in a particular area of the country that aren't yet recognized. So we need to get to a point in the country where we have such extensive diagnostic testing that we can test people who have mild symptoms. Right now, many, in many places in the country, if you have mild symptoms, you can't get a test. But those people can spread the disease just as well as the people who are sick in the hospital. So we need to get to a point where we have, oh, go ahead. No, I, got, I didn't mean to interrupt, but the president talks about in these certain areas of the country that people could actually go back to work, go back to offices, as long as they practice the, the guidelines for these last 15 days. In the office, social distancing. In the office, good hygiene, uh, washing your hands a lot. Take a look at what, what the president said. We can socially distance ourselves and go to work, and you'll have to work a little bit harder. You can clean your hands five times more than you used to. 
Dr. Inglesby, will that work? Uh, I don't think so. I think if we, we've seen in Italy, uh, for example, which is a number of weeks ahead of the United States in terms of its epidemic, that even with very serious, very aggressive social distancing measures where people have been kept at home, schools have been closed, everyone is, is recommended not to leave their homes, that this disease has continued to spread and is causing national crisis. So at this point, I think what we need to do is really stick with what other countries that have had more success have done, which is they've largely been in Asia, Singapore, Hong Kong, South Korea, China, Taiwan. They have put in place social distancing measures until they've gotten control of the epidemic convincingly, and at that point begun to try experiments with loosening it. And I do think we will get to that point. Obviously, we need to, as, as a country, get to a point where people can go back to work. But if we go back to work too quickly, this epidemic is going to spread widely and aggressively, and we won't have a normal economy in that case anyway. So I really do think that you know, while this epidemic continues to be on the rise in many places in the country, and we don't know enough about diagnostics in many other parts of the country, we really should hold the course. So. If Easter, as the president has suggested, is too soon mm -hmm. to begin to loosen the reins in the, quote, low-risk areas, when would you say, this is the kind of question reporters ask, mm -hmm. and I'm sure ep epidemiologists like you hate, two questions. One, what is the earliest that you think that we could begin to loosen the reins in some of the less affected areas? And then the question I'm sure you're getting over and over, how long is this going to last before we really go back to normal? So I, I think dates are hard to predict because every day the numbers continue to go up in many parts of the country. I think we should really have this more like a conditions-based decision. So when we see a state or a region have numbers that go down over time, and when we have diagnostics in place, and when we have masks available for all of our doctors and nurses who are putting their lives at risk to take care of, take care of sick patients, and hospitals are well prepared, and when we can get our public health systems in place to start tracing or identifying individuals and tracing their contacts, again, like they do in Asia, I think those five major conditions, then I think it's a time to begin to think about how we might experiment with lightening social distancing, perhaps one step at a time. It's not clear to me when that's gonna happen. I think we'll have to see where we are in two more weeks. In other, in other countries where they've put social distancing measures in place aggressively, it's taken about four weeks for those measures to begin to have an effect. But at that point, I think we could begin to look for the conditions that might make it safe to begin to lower our social distancing, but not until then. Dr. Inglesby, thank you. Thanks for providing Thanks your for, expert analysis. And please come back, sir.